Welcome to Long G Rice Rice Terrace and it is absolutely incredible here. The mountain views are amazing. I do have to first apologize for sort of the lighting situation I'm working with here. The sun is in a position where uh, I'm either dark and the background is completely white or you can see the background really clearly and I'm fully dark. So I've had to kind of go for an in-between but I'm mostly going to be showing footage of uh, what we've done and stuff here in Longji. So hopefully it's not too too big of an issue. Yeah, so I'll start off. Like Longji is absolutely beautiful. Like Siguelin is amazing and it does kind of get overshadowed in terms of the scenic areas that you can see because here in Longji, it, high up in the mountains, it's just a beautiful, beautiful view. There are several different hikes you can go. We were told there are several different places you can go to either see a fantastic sunrise or a fantastic sunset and the points are all kind of located around. Unfortunately, this area is so big, it's not exactly easy to get between all of them. However, whichever ones you do decide to go to, you will see beautiful scenic sights, basically everywhere you go. Just looking outside of our hotel room here is just an incredible view. And then this area is just absolutely massive. Getting around it is, is a bit of an issue, but you won't be disappointed with what you're seeing here. If you love hiking, then this is definitely gonna be a place you absolutely love because it's made for hiking. The mountain areas are so big, so fast. You can just hike for hours and hours and see and constantly see amazing views. So we went to two different locations that is recommended here. One that's kind of close to our hotel where we got uh, obviously saw the amazing views, the amazing layers that Longji is famous for. We kind of got caught in the rain there and it was actually more of a blessing than a curse. Even though we were kind of stuck for a while, at the end of it we saw one of the most clearest rainbows I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I'm not sure how well my camera captured it but it was incredibly clear and looked incredible. It wasn't high up in the sky either, it was low in the ground. And it's, so there's definitely a benefit of seeing both like the clear blue sky weather as well as sort of the raininess and then you kind of get this sort of like foggy misty across the mountains which looks gorgeous too. Now the hike is, the hiking here is quite steep. These are, these are mountains so it does take a lot of effort. It does need to have some sort of physicality to it. I'm not a massive hiker, but I did enjoy walking up these. I was extremely tired, but the views at the top are definitely worth it. And then we went to our second location in the evening to try and catch what we thought was going to be an incredible sunset, especially being so high up. So we had to take a cable car to get there. Now there are hiking routes all the way up this mountain. However, uh, we were kind of done hiking. So we took the cable car. We did have to hike to the cable car though and then you take the cable car all the way up and you get there and again you just see stunning views, stunning uh, layers of all these rice terraces just laid up all the way. Unfortunately though, there wasn't a sunset there. The sun kind of set behind the mountain. The sun disappeared behind the mountain uh, about 40 minutes before the sun actually began to set. So we didn't, we kind of got a little bit of a, an orangey sky but we didn't get the sunset I was kind of promised, not like the one, say, we saw only a few months ago in uh, the Cotswolds in Kembel. But still, I highly recommend going up here, either hiking up or taking the cable car up because the views are incredible. And you can definitely get some fantastic Instagram photos. Or if you've got a drone, then you'll get some beautiful scen 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 scenic shots. And there are also places to eat up there as well. Also, one thing you'll notice when you're around here is you'll see lots of people dressed up in traditional clothing. Now, this traditional clothing is available for anyone to buy and dress up or like rent, I'm assuming. You rent it, you can dress up. We saw loads of people taking, uh, renting out these traditional dresses and traditional suits. 
uh, both young and old and then you can take uh, amazing photographs and just really kind of get into the field the culture now we were contemplating whether or not we should buy some as well because we were here for such a short time and we didn't really feel like we had enough time to do it because we're kind of in a rush with the trip we planned is kind of very tight so we didn't do it this time but it was definitely something we uh, were considering and maybe next time we go somewhere like this we'll definitely be able to dress up and take even better photographs looking uh, more traditional. So we done these two hikes but there are other things here to do in Longji. Unfortunately we didn't have enough time so if you're planning your trip here you definitely want to consider how long you're going to be here and what it is that you want to do. We've planned a very short time basically just to see the scenery, see uh, high up in the mountains. However, if we were staying here for like an extra day, there are things that we definitely want to do that apparently there are more like local villages you can explore. Now we didn't see those, we were hoping we'd kind of see, see them or be in one of them. But unfortunately we were in more of like a hotel district, there were just like lots and lots of hotels here. But apparently there are some more local traditional villages around that you are free to enter and explore. There's also the Datang Cultural Center, which is also I think like more like a small villagey part where you might be able to get some more like traditional food and see some more traditional architecture there as well. But we never went there, so I'm not entirely sure either. And there are also hot springs here somewhere. Uh, might be a little bit of a hike to get to them, or you might have to take some sort of uh, car ride to get there. But there are also hot springs, so you can enjoy being in a hot spring up in the mountains. It's definitely something I would have loved to have done, but again, we just kind of run out of time. Now we're here during the uh, autumn festival, the national holiday. So it's incredibly busy. So there was some sort of nightlife happening. There were fireworks going off. It was all kind of very exciting. So if you want to get more out of your experience than just seeing the scenic areas, there is some local food here for you to try and delicious local food for you here to try. You will see it absolutely everywhere in pretty much all of the restaurants. Obviously this is place famous for growing rice. So you kind of expect rice to be here. And they have uh, rice cooked in sort of a bamboo tube. It's called like rice tube. Uh, and it's incredibly sticky. It's the stickiest rice I think I've ever eaten. But it's very well cooked. It's very delicious. It's served in bamboo. And I'm assuming it's local rice. And it certainly does have like a different taste to it. Like I never really thought rice could have different tastes. And then when I've been here, in the south I'm like actually there is some like the rice does taste different here than it does in Shanghai. Also they cook pork or, and different types of sausages in slightly different ways. Now I'm not familiar with the cooking style it's not a unique style I've seen it done in other places I just don't know what it's called but they sort of like dry it out they cook it for a long time you can see them uh, you can see farmers hanging hanging it outside and it can be outside for a few days uh, and then they they kind of cook it. Uh, it's very, I, I just don't know the style of cooking as I'm not a chef, but it's very delicious, very worth trying because it's all kind of local food. And then there is rice wine, which is actually like made of, from rice. There's rice in, in the wine. And that's kind of what you expect here. This is Long G Rice Terraces. So hey, we're getting some rice in our wine. And we got given this for free, just like you sit down and sometimes they give you uh, some rice wine for free on the table. Not everywhere, of course, maybe just the hotel you're staying in, but it's definitely worth a try. And you can definitely get this great cultural experience, seeing the scenery, see the local village and, village and trying some local food with some local wine. Absolutely perfect for a cultural experience. If you're looking for something uh, a little bit more Western, that is going to be a little more difficult to find. As most of the food places we've seen here are more focused around local food. Now getting here, I do think you have to be a little bit organized. Uh, I don't think it's that easy to get here. So it's quite high up in the mountains, driving from Guilin or from Guilin Airport to get here will take a few hours. So whether you're taking like a taxi or if you're driving yourself then you'll come to the entry point the entry point here in long g costs 80 rem and b to get inside and then once you're inside then you've got to find your way to the hotel so some of this might be slightly easier on a tour but maybe the tour doesn't necessarily go to the places you want to go in which case you could be paying a lot of money to do things you don't want to do or you'll pay a lot of money just to get in and out and then you don't do what the other stuff the tour offers. So if you're coming here on your own, be very organized as there are limited coaches going in and out. Luckily, I'm here with Felicity, so she was able to arrange 
uh, getting here and getting us back on the coach so that we didn't have to book through a tour. However, we have seen some tours here and there's nothing wrong with tours. I love going on tours, especially considering the convenience. And I definitely recommend the, the convenience of getting here and not kind of like being stuck because there are limited coaches leaving. So you definitely want to make sure you can get here and out without too much trouble. So if you do want to come here, just book the coaches early and you should be absolutely fine. But this area is quite vast. So the places the coaches leave and enter from might not necessarily be the closest ones to your hotel. Now the prices here can seem a bit expensive, but we stayed here during a peak season. So I felt that the prices were quite reasonable. You can have your very fancy hotels, which is actually a very fancy one next to us, which gets like absolutely gorgeous views uh, through these glass windows that look amazing. And you can go for one that we've done uh, slightly cheaper and you still get absolutely beautiful views, although I'll show it to you on the drone as opposed to showing it to you behind me right now, which is still gorgeous. And there are obviously much cheaper places, which are more like guest house where you can stay uh, with multiple people and you can do this trip a lot cheaper. Depending on your budget, there all the options are kind of here. So I kind of felt like the prices for the hotels were reasonably priced, but you do have to factor in the 80 quiet to get him into this area as well and if you are taking the cable car up to the highest point that uh, we went to that is also I forgot to mention that is a hundred ram and B return so you can just get it singly up and you can walk down or you can walk up and you can take it down for a cheaper price however if you want to return like you go up and down then that's 100 ram and B and hopefully you'll have a hotel that looks out onto the beautiful terraces like we have which is an absolutely gorgeous view and you can just like sit outside in the morning whilst you collect yourself with either tea, coffee or water and just look at the stunning views in the morning before you sell off on your journey. Overall, I think this place is absolutely amazing. We have a fantastic host here in our hotel. He's actually going to drive us to where the coach is going to take us uh, to Young Shaw. And he actually picked us up from the entry point. Now, not all hotel hosts are going to do that for you. Uh, so you do have to be more selective in that. But overall, I've loved this. Like the scenery here is fantastic. Uh, we were contemplating, like once we done our hike to our first scenic area, we were contemplating not going up to the very top. But I am absolutely de delighted that we did decide to take the cable cars up in the end because the views were incredible. I do wish we had one more day here just to explore around, not necessarily going on the hikes, just to maybe explore the village a bit more, maybe try and check out the hot springs. But overall, when your time here is tight and maybe you've got like, this is your once in a lifetime trip to China, you're not necessarily going to have the time to relax here like you want to, wanted to, maybe you're like us and your time is tight. So you can only really see the scenic areas. And I definitely say this is what coming to Longji is for is to see the scenic areas. There's probably great other stuff here that you can do if you can stay longer. However, if this is, like I said, you're only going to come to China once in your lifetime and you want to see some mountains and you want to come to the Guilin area, then this is, I would say, a must at least to come on, a, uh, to stay one night. That's what we've done. We've stayed one night. We got here very early. We've done some hiking and now we're going to go home. Uh, we're going to go to Yangshaw today to try and squeeze in as much as possible. If you do have the luxury of more time, then there's probably a lot more here to explore. But either way, I wish I had more time to explore here. Maybe I'll get another chance to come back and just do some exploring as opposed to hiking. But we'll see how things go. That's what that's all I have to say about Long G. Uh, if this video has provided any sort of useful information, please like and subscribe. Other than that, I hope you are enjoying your travels, having a fantastic trip and I highly recommend Longji as a must destination. But anyway, as they say in China, bye bye.